Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering question number two from the International A Level at Excel Mechanics M1 paper from January 2022. This question um, first is about momentum and impulse. It says a particle P has a mass K M and a particle Q has a mass M. The particles are moving towards each other in opposite directions along the same straight line when they collide directly. Immediately before the collision, P has a speed of 3U and Q has a speed of U. As a result of the collision, the direction of motion of each particle is reversed and the speed of each particle is halved to find the value of K. All right, so let's make a little diagram. I've got my two masses. Let's draw them in circles. I've got um, mass P, okay, P, which has got a mass of Km, and I've got Q, which has a mass of M. Before the collision, I'll, I'll put the situation before on top and after underneath. Okay, so before the collision, um, they're moving towards each other with a P with a speed of 3U, so put this, this direction 3U and Q with the speed of U, so in this direction, this is going to be U. And after the collision, they, they, um, the direction of motion is reversed, so this is going to go in this direction, that's going to go in that direction, and the speed of each particle is halved. So this is going to be 3U over 2, and this is going to be U over 2, in that direction. Now, there's two ways we could answer this question, actually. One of the ways we could answer this question is by using the conservation of linear momentum, which is probably the way that they intended you to answer this question because part B of the question is asking you to find the impulse of, um, what does it ask you again? Part B says, find in terms of M and U the magnitude of the impulse exerted on Q in the collision. So the question is intending you for you to really use conservation of linear momentum, although we could use actually impulse we could answer part b first and use the answer for part b to answer part a so i'm going to show you how that works at the end of the question to show you how because sometimes actually they give you questions where the only way to answer the question is by using um the impulse all right so i'll show you how to do both so that you have the idea what to do now in this question if we use the conservation of um, linear momentum, the law of conservation or conservation of li linear momentum, the total momentum before the collision and the total momentum after the collision is the same. So if before the collision, the mass times the velocity of each of the particles, okay, the sum of the mass, um, the, the momentums before and after will be equal to each other. So I'm going to do something very important you've got to decide which way to take positive. In my diagram, I'm going to take the right as positive. All right, so all the velocities to the right will be positive velocities, all the velocities to the left will be negative velocities, so that we can be very clear for uh, getting our answer correct. So first of all, the mass times the velocity before the collision, or the, the sum of the momentums before the collision, is for P, it's Km times 3U, positive 3U. Plus, for Q, it's M times, that's going to be negative U, is equal to the total momentum after the collision. Now, for this time, uh, after the collision, the direction of P has been reversed, so it's going to be Km. Now it's going in the opposite direction, and it's half, so it's Km times minus 3U over 2. And for Q, it's going to be M times positive U over 2. So that's the total momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision. Right, so if you expand, or we just simplify each of these terms, we'll see we're going to have um, 3KMU minus MU equals minus 3KMU divided by 2 plus MU divided by 2. Now what we can see here is that each of these terms have got MU. In it. So if I divide the whole equation by mu, just to make life a bit less less hassle for us as we're writing down each term, the mu's will all cancel out. So I'll be left with 3k minus 1 equals minus 3k over 2 plus a half. 
And then I can multiply both sides by 2 to get, eliminate the fraction from the equations. If you don't like fractions, so you've got 6k minus 2 equals minus 3k plus 1. And now we can simply solve this equation. 6k um, plus 3k is equal to 1 plus 2. So you're left with 9k equals 3. Therefore, k equals 3 over 9. So we can say k equals 1 third. Okay, there's the answer to part A using the conservation of linear momentum. Now, we, as I said, we could have found the answer in another way, which I'll show you right at the end after I've answered part B. Okay, uh, now part B tells us to find the impulse of Q, P on Q. Okay, so let me just... Okay, so I've just taken over this diagram to the other page, so we've got in front of us. It says, find in terms of M and U the magnitude of the impulse exerted on Q in the collision. So the impulse in exerted on Q, impulse in exerted on Q is basically the change in momentum, mv minus mu, which you can write as m times v minus u. Okay, so the change in momentum is equal to the impulse. So if we look at the um, impulse exerted on Q, okay, it's going to be m, which is its mass m, times v, okay, now, the final velocity here, so if you look at, in this case, you've got the mass is m, the final velocity is u over 2, and the initial velocity, as it started, is negative u, minus u. So m times the final velocity, which is u over 2, minus the initial velocity, which is minus u. Okay, so that's going to give you your impulse. Okay, so you have, this is going to be m times, and this is going to be 3u over 2. So that means the impulse is given by 3mu over 2. All right, that's the impulse exerted on Q in the collision. Okay, and if our impulse turned out as being negative, we would have to write the answer as positive because it says find the magnitude of the impulse. So that's an important point. Okay, so the impulse is 3mu over 2 and it will be positive, and that's the answer to the, that question. Now, supposing the question had asked us, or supposing uh, we, we had decided to answer part A for, or B first and find the impulse, we can use this answer actually to find what K is in an alternative way of doing um, part A. So you could have, for part A, first found the impulse exerted on Q, and we know that that impulse on Q is equal and opposite to the impulse on P, the impulse exerted on P is going to be the same magnitude but the opposite direction because it's going to act in this direction to change its motion. So we can say that on P, on P we can say the impulse is equal to minus 3m u over 2. The, the value of the impulse is minus 3m u over 2. And for P, we can say that if we look at the formula for the impulse, we can say m is km. And u for this one was 3u, and v was 3u over 2, negative 3u over 2, because it changed direction, went the opposite direction, and now negative direction. So we can say the impulse, which is minus 3mu over 2, is equal to the mass, which is km, times minus 3u over 2, minus 3u. Okay, so we can find what k is now. We can get rid of the k's the m's and the u's because there's the common factors on both sides so you're left with minus 3 over 2 equals k times that's going to be minus 3 over u minus 3 over 2 minus 3 which is minus 9 over 2 okay so we can multiply both sides by 2 and we'll end up with minus 3 equals minus 9k therefore k is equal to minus 3 over minus 9 so k is equal to a third. So that's an alternative way of finding k. It's an alternative way of, of finding k um, com compared to what we did in part A. But that's fine. It seems like the question has been designed for you to use the, co the conservation of linear momentum first and then the impulse. But that is an alternative way of finding k. Some questions do come up where this would be the, you know, you, you might have find that the only way to find or to solve the problem is by using the fact that the impulse, um, or you know, you can find the impulse on one of them. 
okay, um, because you don't may, maybe have enough information to use conservation of linear momentum. There's a few questions that have come up like that before. So you should understand how to deal with both methods in this type of problem. All right, so there we have the answer to number two um, from this January 2022 Mechanics M1 paper. Other questions from this paper can be found on the, um, the playlist for the paper, which is over here. Other questions from uh, Momentum and Impulse of M1 can be found in the playlist in this area. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.